So hi, this is Beth Billings, and we are doing the December hat from Kelburn Woolens tonight, and we're going to be covering some of the aspects of this pattern on the video um, to help you work the whole pattern. So this is the third in our series of hats. We started with the July hat, and last month we did the March hat, and videos for those two projects are on our website at at www.aroundthetableyarns.com um, under a year of hats or under Project Monday, which uh, a year of hats is part of our Project Monday offerings. Um, so some of the things that I am showing tonight refer back to previous videos, and that's where you can find them. So I'm just starting with the pattern for the hat itself. This is what the hat looks like. Um, it's a really nice, oh, I think, <laughs> I think my screen is uh, blurring out the background. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to undo that. <laughs> okay, there we go. So um, <laughs> it's like, where'd the rest of my stuff go. Okay, so here is um, a photograph of the hat. And as you can see, it is um, an intricate and moving around, they call it traveling cables. So one of the things we're going to learn tonight is traveling cables. And then uh, the first thing, though, is always the cast on. And the cast on for the December hat is also a tubular cast on. So those of you who did the March hat with us, we did the tubular cast on last month. Um, this cast on though is a little bit different because once you get through the crochet cast on and the, um, the setup rows, instead of going forward in knit one, purl one, like the March hat did, you rearrange the stitches to be knit two, purl two. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate first, is rearranging the stitches. And then I'm going to move to, and then you, once you've rearranged them in knit two, purl two, you work for several rows for the ribbing, and then you start to do the cabling. And these cables are very interesting. As they move, they go from being one or two stitches to having three or even four stitches and then they get smaller again. So that's one interesting aspect of these cables. Also, like for example, in this cable, these two um, stockinette cables are moving separately and there is a purl stitch between them. And the purl stitch between them remains between them as you do the crosses. And so there's a little bit of intricacy to the cables that I just want to cover with everybody. Um, if you look at the cable chart here, look at all the different kinds of cables that are listed in the chart. We don't do any more repeats of the rows. Once you've worked all of these rows up to row 39, you're done with the hat, which is sort of a blessing because yikes. But you do repeat this section five times around. And so there's a lot of opportunities to cable. So uh, what I'd like to do is just go over the cables with you, talk about some things that will make it easier for you to cable, um, including using markers, um, highlighting your chart. And then I, if you're not, um, if you're a computer user, you could take a screenshot of the abbreviations and maybe paste them on your screen right here, but that is something that I would recommend is taking your abbreviations that are here on page two and just uh, taping them or pasting them on your computer screen to page four where the cable chart is so that you don't have to look in two places for that information. Um, I'm a big fan of printing out my patterns and then rearranging the pieces in the way that makes the most sense. I think I learned it from my church organists who tape all their stuff together so they can play all the pieces in order. Um, okay. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to work on with you is rearranging the stitches for knit two, purl two ribbing, which is row five of the pattern. And I've done some of it already. So here's my provisional cast on. Here are my stitches. And as you can see, I've, I've worked the first couple of rows with the slip ones with yarn in front and knit one or knit one and slip one with yarn in front. And now I've started to rearrange them so that it's knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two across. And the way that I did that is that I came to the first knit one. So here I am. We're going to just pretend this is the edge because I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to do the whole row because it's a hundred stitches. So I come to the first knit one and I knit it as written. Pardon me. I'm going to turn my phone off. I apologize for that. Okay. So now you're faced with a purl one and a knit one. So what they tell you to do is get your cable needle out, transfer this to the cable needle, hold it to the back, knit your knit stitch, then transfer the cable stitch, the purl stitch back to the left hand needle and continue. But I watched a video recently where somebody skipped the cable needle and I thought it was brilliant and I just want to share it with you. So take your, so your yarn is in the back as though to knit because you're going to be knitting the next stitch. Go knit wise into the next, into the second stitch from the point of the needle, the stitch that you really want and take both. So go through that one and the one next to it and take them both off and then pick that purl stitch off. It's actually backwards if you do it that way. So, oh, no, it wasn't. It was perfect. So now I have the purl stitch second and the knit stitch first. And now I'm just going to put my left needle into the front leg of that stitch and knit it. And then I'm going to purl to the one that I moved and the one that was just sitting there waiting. And then I'm going to knit one. And that puts me back in the same position. So let me demonstrate it again. Take your right hand needle and go knit wise into both stitches and pull them off. And then put your, your needle into that stitch. Again, sort of knit wise, go under the leg that you can see and pull it off. Then take the left needle under the front leg of the stitch that's on your right needle and knit it. So it's a very safe, no cable needle required cross. So I'm going knit wise into both stitches and then knit wise into the, that one stitch so that I'm, ah, I did that wrong. Oh, cause I didn't knit the stitch. <laughs> this is why there should be pauses on my recordings. <laughs> Okay, so knit one, so don't do it until you've knit the one stitch. So the second stitch from the needle should be your knit stitch. And you don't wrap around, you just slide them off, put your needle into the purl stitch, and then you're separated. Put the left needle into the front leg of the knit stitch and work it. Move your yarn and purl normally the purl stitch one more time. Okay, yarn to the back and knit the first of the two knit stitches. Put the right needle into the knit stitch that's two stitches from the end and into the purl stitch. Slide them both off of the left needle and then put the left needle into the, the purl stitch, which is closest to the tip just by sliding into it sort of between those two stitches on the right needle. That transfers them and you don't need to transfer this back. You can just pick up that front leg, wrap around, and that's a normal knit stitch. 
than you purl to. So I thought this was a really nice way of saving myself from having to get my cable needle out every time for 50 pairs of stitches. So I hope this saves you some time too. So then you can see that it's knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two. Any questions? Okay. Okay, so once you've completed the cast on of this hat, you will have the stitches lined up, look at all the cat hair. You'll have the stitches lined up in knit two, purl two pairs, and you'll begin um, your ribbing. And I believe the ribbing is like an inch and a quarter because it does start to cable sort of in the ribbing. It's like, it's like the cable almost comes right to the edge of the hat. If you need to see, or if you'd like to see how to remove the um, provisional cast on, I'm just sliding out that stitch. And what you can see is that part of the yarn is inside. So I've just pulled out my first crochet stitch and part of the yarn is, is inside of the tube of the tubular cast on. And so all I have to do is pull on it to release the crochet stitches. They're a little fuzzy. They've been, they've been traveling around with me for a week or so. So they're a little fuzzy. So it just helps if you're doing it to just gently pull it apart. It's like untangling hair that's gotten caught in the, the blackberry bush. <laughs> I'm just pulling it apart there and then pulling and pulling it apart and pulling the yarn out. And then that should go right to the end. So my waist yarn is removed. The tubes were worked in both directions when we were during, doing those turning rows. And so we have this nice stretchy ribbed edge. It makes a really clean and nice edge. Nice stretchy ribbed edge there. It did not have us join until the fifth row or till after the fifth row. So this is where the beginning of my round is. And you can see it's almost perfect. I just need to weave this in on the on this side. And, and then I could even weave my yarn into the tube and it would disappear. And that would be my join. So it's quite a nice beginning of a hat. All right. So when you do this pattern, there's some things to pay attention to that I, I want to point out on the video. And the first thing is that you start with 100 stitches and you get to 110 stitches. And that, that there's no part on the pattern where it says that. Like here you have 100 stitches and then you work the brim and you change to larger needles and it says work rounds one through 39 of cable pattern from chart, 110 stitches after working row one, 80 stitches after working row 39. And I was teaching this this morning and somebody was like, where'd the 10 stitches come from? <laughs> and in my head, I was like, I don't know. I can't remember. And then we looked at the chart round one and the chart round one, and just in case you've forgotten, a chart is always written to symbolize the face of the fabric. So if this is a chart repeat here between my fingers, these lines on the page represent what's actually happening here in my cable. So for example, here, and here, those two right twists, for some reason, are left twists on my cable. 
which just goes to show. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're right twists. Yeah, I made them left twists. You know what? I'm a designer. <laughs> <laughs> so i could fix that or i could just say that's a design element that i'm going to live with and maybe i'll make the rest of them that that same direction um i'm very impressed with myself i i didn't realize i'd done that i would have ripped it out and started over <laughs> Okay, back to what we were talking about, though, which is row one. So we have a knit two, purl two. So in the chart, the blank white squares are knits. That's in the key at the top. And the pearls have a line through them and are always gray. And so they've made that so that the knit stitches really stand out in the chart. What you should notice is that if it was knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, or yeah, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. So if those are the 20 stitches of each repeat, you get two extra ones when you make one purl wise between the second column of knit stitches in the repeat and the fourth column of purl stitches in the repeat. So I highly recommend using your markers. So as you come to the beginning of the round, you will knit two, purl two, knit one, and then between that knit stitch and the next knit stitch, you will make one purl wise. The way to make one purl wise, I think the easiest way to make one purl wise is to come from, come from the front, with your left needle between the stitches, bring the yarn forward and purl into the back leg. And that can be a little tight, but that's sort of the point is you don't necessarily want to have, and that makes a stitch purl wise between two stitches that existed already. I'll show you that again. To make one purl wise, Take your left needle, go under the horizontal strand of yarn between the two stitches. Make sure your yarn is at the front and then purl through the back leg of that twisted stitch on the left needle. And then you can move the yarn back to the back to do your knit stitch if you're there or it's between two purl stitches further down. Okay. It's really important to know what you're looking at on the chart. So I think it's important to learn the chart symbols. And again, I do recommend cutting out the, um, move them again, cutting out the abbreviations here. You could cut out this box or you could take a screenshot of it and you could paste it onto this page. And I think that would make a big difference in um, a lot of people's work because we don't, there's a lot of information on this page already. And if you have to scan back and forth between two pages, I think that's a lot of distraction. And also this is a big piece of information. So if you can learn something about the symbols, so you don't always have to refer to the symbols, you might, knit your cables backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but it might not matter, right? Like my hat looks fine. It's just that I did my cables backwards. So I'm, I'm okay to live with that. And in fact, the next set of, of uh, twists go in the opposite direction from the first one. So if I just keep reversing them, you know, that's my hat. Um, the other thing I want you to notice about the cable chart is that there are a lot of places where two stitches that are knit become three stitches that are knit. So if you look at row five here, two, these two knit stitches get moved over and the first stitch, sorry, 
the first stitch becomes, I'm sorry, that one isn't the case. This one, they just move over and the purl stitch moves to the right of them. But this stitch moves over and the purl stitch becomes a knit stitch. So in this case, you're doing a cross between the two knit stitches and the purl stitch and the purl stitch ends up on the right hand side and the knit stitch is crossed to the left. And in this case, you're doing a cross between the purl stitch and the knit stitch between my fingers and they both end up as knit stitches. So please pay attention to the chart because there are a lot of places like here you can see four knit stitches and they cross and then there are four knit stitches. So there's that's staying with the same number, but up here, four knit stitches cross, one of the knit stitches becomes a purl. And then at the end of that cross, the next round, those three stitches are knitted, but that first one is purled. So there's a lot of changing from knit to purl in the chart. So it's just, you wanna be keeping track of it you might want to use a post-it note or a piece of uh, knitter's highlighter tape, or you might want to use a highlighter on a paper copy, or you might want to be using Knit Companion or another um, program like that, or a note-taking program on a, on a device. Um, the, the chart symbol indicates the lean of the cable. So if it's leaning to the left, that's a front cross. If it's leaning to the right, it's a back cross. So anything that leans, so if here are my four stitches, if it leans to the left, the first two stitches or the first stitch has to go over to the front and over. And if it leans to the right, it means the first two stitches go behind. So that's very helpful. So for example, this one is cable two. If it says cable two, then you put two stitches onto the hook. And then one tells you how many stitches are being crossed, how many stitches are being worked after that two. So this is a three stitch cable. You put two stitches onto the cable hook and then you work a left cross purl wise. So you can see the little, it's gray and there's a little line there. So this means you would put two stitches onto the cable hook, hold them to the front because it's a left cross. And then you would work the next stitch. Sorry, I'm here. You would work the next stitch as a purl. So it would move from the left side to the right side. And then you would knit the two stitches from the cable hook. The converse, knit one, two, so it's, you would put one stitch on the cable hook, you would hold it to the back, you would knit the next two stitches, and then the one that you held, you would work purlwise. And that's shown by the little dash there. So the chart symbols give a visual representation of what you're supposed to do with your cable hook as you're going. An excellent um, way to keep track of this because they all tend to sort of look the same is to get different colored pencils and to give them each a different color and then find them on the chart and color them in with that different color so that when you run into them, it's really easy to go over here and find the one that it matches. And that's a good way to become really familiar with the chart before you work it. So a little coloring example, a little coloring time can make it much easier for you to work the chart later. Um, we have the make one pearl wise down here with special symbols. I always like to look up on the chart and see if there's anything special happening and then look to see how often it happens. And the clue is that we go from 100 to 110 stitches. So down here, there's, there's the answer to that question. Where did those extra stitches come from? They come from these make one pearl wise. And it only happens in the first mm -hmm. round. Yeah. Later, 
we're going to be losing stitches. And that's symbolized in the charts by these blank spaces. When you're reading a chart, you're always reading it from right to left. And when there is a blank space, you skip it. So if you were on round 37, you would have finished here. So if you're on round 36, you would have worked across and look right here. This is a purl two together. So you would lose one stitch here and one stitch here. And so those are represented in the chart by these blank spaces. So this is purl two, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, two, three, and then you do a purl two together. Knit two, purl one, knit two, purl two together, purl one. And that will get rid of two stitches. Then you come to round 37 and it starts with a purl two together, then has one of our fancier cable crosses, and then another purl two together, and then purl two, another fancy cable cross, and then purl two. So you lose two more. So this one was already gone. This one was already gone. And now you're losing two more mm -hmm. stitches. And that, let's see. One, two, three. And they're not there. Oh. Are we missing them? No. And then there's a round without any decreases, and then there's another round of decreases. Mm -hmm. And that's why these spaces are there, and you just skip them. You, you just don't read them as you go across. And you read only the stitches in order from right to left. When you get to the end of round 39, you're gonna do a much simpler, decrease and it's going to last for six rounds. And this is very similar to um, the other decreases we've been doing, except for round 30, 41. There's a cable cross here in the beginning of round 41. And that cable cross is the 212, 212 right piece. So it's this one here. So this is these are the two I'm going to demonstrate. And I want to make sure if you have any questions about doing these cable crosses that I answer them. So I'm not in that place on mine. I can show you where the cable crosses are. They're here because there's a purl stitch. Those, those more complicated cable crosses are where the purl stitches are. And then the simpler cable crosses are here where the stitches are traveling and moving along in different directions on the on the knitting. So I'm currently working round 15. I'm finishing round 15. So I am here. I have a purl one. I'm just going to do that so you can see where I am in round 15. I've just done this purl one here. And now what I want to do this purl one here, I want to do this cross and note that in this cross, all of the stitches are knit, but one of the stitches that I'm working was a purl stitch. So this is an example of taking a purl and two knits and making it into three knit stitches. So I'm going to do this without a cable needle and then I'm going to do it with a cable needle. If I can find it. So 
So without without further ado, um, so these three stitches are a purl stitch and two knits. And I want to cross the two knits to the right in front of the purl stitch. And so normally what happens is you would hold the purl stitch to the back on a cable needle. You would knit the two and then bring the cable stitch around like this and knit off of it, which I sometimes find kind of fiddly. So another way that I work with a cable needle is it's already sitting here like this. And I just put the stitch back on to my right needle and work it. And then this is gonna be worked as a knit stitch even though it was a purl stitch. Okay, so that's turning the two stitches that were knit and one that was purl into three knit stitches. But as I had done the, um, the cross without a cable needle, I was curious as I was working this, since there are so many of these three stitch crosses, I was really curious whether or not I could work a three stitch cross without, because there's a lot of two stitch crosses and three stitch crosses. And if you can do it without the cable needle, it can speed up your knitting a little bit. And it takes a little practice and it takes a little patience. So I'm going to knit first. The first stitches that are gonna be worked are gonna be knitted. So I wanna make sure I move my yarn to the side that they're gonna be worked on. And like we did before, I'm going to go into the two stitches, but this time I'm just gonna slide them purl wise. So I'm gonna go in from the right hand side purl wise and I'm going to pull them off of the left needle with their first stitch. And then I'm going to slip my left needle into that, that lonely stitch that was floating there for a minute. So do you see that that makes the cross for you? And it puts the stitch safely on the mm -hmm. left hand needle. And then you can just slide these back over and work them in order. And then that last one is also a knit stitch. Okay, that was, that was there. And then I knit one more. Hmm. Am I on the wrong one? That's a three stitch. No, that's correct. And that, sorry, and then it's, I'm looking in the wrong place. I'm sorry, I'm on 13, not 15. Silly me. Hmm. And then we're going to do the three. It was the same cross. It was, I was just on the wrong line. So I have three stitches to purl. And now I want to move these two knit stitches, one more stitch over, and then this purl is gonna cross to the other side. And it is also gonna become a knit stitch. So again, all of these stitches are going to be knit. So I move my yarn to the side that it needs to be on. I slide these. These are going to go forward this time. So I let them float for a second while I get that one. And then I put my needle in those. So that's that cross here, another way that you could do it. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Another way that you could do it 
is you could go knitwise into this stitch so it's on the needle, pop the two off and put the left needle right into them. And you're ready to go. You're ready to knit that stitch. And that puts you in the position that you're supposed to be in at the end of row 13 of having those two stitches now converted into three knit stitches with three purls between them and one purl left on the end at the end of the round. So that's how I've been doing these um, two and three stitch crosses. Any questions about those? Okay, so the last thing I want to do is demonstrate the two sort of special crosses here, because I think they're really, um, they're really straightforward in some ways. If you read the description of them, it says slip two stitches to the cable needle, hold to the back, slip one stitch to a second cable needle, hold to the back, knit two, purl one from the second cable needle. So that's the purl one that stays in the middle and then knit two from the first cable needle. So if you can master this use of, or this um, cabling without a cable needle, then you only need one when you do the double crosses. So I would call these the double crosses because there's two cable needles involved or two cable crosses involved. All right, so let's, let's see what one of those would look like. Slip two stitches to a cable needle and hold to front. Well, you could move these to the cable needle and hold to the front as written, and then do the cross of the next three stitches. So I've moved two to the cable needle and I'm holding it to front. And then I'm planning on doing the cross of these three stitches without a cable needle. And the way that I would do that, I would slip So I'm doing the C2 1 2 LP, the very bottom one. Mm -hmm. I slip two to the cable needle and I'm holding them to the front. I would slip the one stitch over Hang on, no, I would go knitwise into, in, because these stitches will come in front, I'd go knitwise into both of those stitches and then pop that one onto my left needle, nice and safe. This is pretty low in my, and then put them back on. They're in order and you can work them in the order so then I purl the one and then I cross and do the last two stitches. So it makes two on the right that have crossed from behind, the pearl in the middle and the two on the left. Let's do it again. So we'll slip two stitches to a cape. I'm, you know what, I'm gonna do them on the other side where it's a little smoother. All right, so we're going to move two stitches onto the cable needle and hold to the front. We're gonna slip, the next two stitches are gonna be held to the back. So I go in behind, sorry. 
the one stitch is going to be held to the back. So I'm going to go in the fronts of these two stitches because I want to pass the one stitch behind. So when I take them off, I just pop that one stitch on. And now I can work them in order. One, two, and then purl the middle one. And then put these two stitches that were held back onto the needle. And that makes my double cross with the purl in the middle. So it's very tight, which is why there's always an X, there's always another round that comes after because that helps you to really see the cables. But here's my two on the left, my one pearl and my two, sorry, my two on the right, my one pearl and my two on the left. Okay, so then let's do the other cross. Just gonna move over a little bit because they get a little scrunched in there. So now we're gonna do the knit, the C212 RP. So this time you're gonna hold two to the back. Slip one stitch to the cable needle and also hold to the back. And the two stitches then, the knit two stitches on the far side here are gonna be worked in front. So I'm gonna go into the fronts of those two stitches. And bring them over. Yep, the one stitch is held to the back, so I'm correct. I'm gonna knit those two. So the cross of those two stitches with the purl stitch is the same, but this time the two held stitches are coming from behind and that makes the cross to the left, sorry, to the right. So you can see there's, there's the first one we did and it looks like it is seriously crossed to the left. There's two and one and two. And then here's this one, two and one and two, and it's crossed in the opposite direction. So hopefully that will save you a couple of steps when you're doing these. When you do them in the pattern, you're doing them twice, usually once or twice in a round. I find that getting my cable needle in and out of my knitting is a slowing down step. Um, that, does, that doesn't mean it's not worth doing, but it can be a little bit fiddly. And I found this, um, this using my hands to do the transfer of the stitches um, less fiddly and helped make my cabling go faster. Um, I clearly read the wrong pattern, <laughs> the wrong one for here. But again, I did it correctly for the one that I did and it looks just as nice, I think. And it's not, it doesn't bother me. Um, so that's, you know, a good lesson of you can make a mistake and not have to rip everything out. You need to look and see if your mistake is, I always look to see if it's symmetric in keeping with the rest of the pattern and um, otherwise sort of even, I, I think symmetric or even is a good judge of whether a mistake should go. <laughs> if it's asymmetric or it looks uneven or raggedy or pulled, mm. then it probably should go, but that looks fine. And I, you know, I would be really surprised if anybody came up to me and said, oh, Beth, <laughs> <laughs> you got your, your first double crosses wrong on your December hat. 